Hello everyone, my name is Zach Peterson. Today I'm gonna show you how to use the code editor and specifically the simulation engine in Flux. Now, in a previous video, we looked at how the simulator works from the schematic end, but what we didn't look was how to actually attach a simulation model to a component. I'm gonna show you how to do that very quickly. And what makes Flux unique in this case is that you aren't actually working with Spice models, you're working with a built-in code editor that uses custom syntax based on TypeScript. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. Make sure to hop into your code editor and follow along. Now, working with simulation models is something that I think is pretty essential if you are uh, an analog designer working on circuit design. Now, the way simulation works in Flux is there is a SPICE engine built into the platform, but you don't have to actually code in a bunch of SPICE models. So that's kind of similar to the way other CAD tools work. There will be a model that exists somewhere, and you can grab it and queue it up in a simulation, and then, of course, you can do all of the, of the standard SPICE simulations that you would normally do. Inside of Flux, it is a little different because when you go into a schematic for a component like I have here on screen, you'll see up here there is a window for the code editor. So here inside of this platform, I have a generic resistor already queued up. So inside of this generic resistor, if I go into the code section, you will see that there is quite a bit of code for this component. So all of this code does two things. The first thing that it does is it configures the simulation that's attached to this component. The second thing that it does is it allows you to configure the assets that are attached to this component. So if you go down here to the assets section and then you scroll down for this generic component, you'll see that there's a lot of assets. And if you recognize any of these file extensions, you'll know that these are KiCad footprints and then step files. So this last bit of code, um, all of this stuff here where my mouse is, this allows you to configure and swap out some of these assets. So that's something that we'll look at in another video. In this video, we want to focus more on the simulation creation and specifically how you tailor the simulation to a particular component. Now, when you're creating components, you can, of course, start with one of these generic components. You can clone it, and then once you clone it, you will have your own version of this component, and then you can go in and edit the code however you want. If you're creating a component from scratch, you might wonder, well, how do I get all of this code into that new component, and which pieces of this code do I actually need to queue up the simulation? So let's first take a look at a custom component. And then once we get into that custom component, I'll show you how to actually attach that simulation model to that component. So to show how some of this stuff works, um, first thing I've done is I've uh, cloned that generic resistor into my own workspace. And then what I'm gonna do is open up this other component and then we'll see how we can uh, add a simulation model to this component. So this particular component that I'm opening right now, this is a MOSFET, and if I go into the code, you will see that there's nothing here. Now, where can I get that first block of code that I can add in to this code editor? Well, what I can do is go to the documentation, and if I scroll down to the documentation and click Show All, and then I scroll down a bit more on the left panel, you'll see here there's an option right here that says Simulation Models. So here in this section, there's this whole huge list of simulation models that are already programmed into Flux. Now, just as an example, in this JFET, there's actually an example published part that includes a JFET model built into it. So that's pretty convenient. You can see here, I'm just opening this JFET example. If I click over here on code, you will now see that we have everything that we need in this JFET model to then queue up the simulator. Now, what this thing is doing is it is doing a few important functions to set up all of this code. So first, we have all of these constants where we are defining these terminals. So each of these terminals is used in a SPICE simulator. 
And what these terminals are going to do is they are going to uh, correspond to a certain value of a voltage and current that are passing through that node connected to this terminal. So each of these terminals is assigned to a node ID. Now where do I get this node ID? Well, if you look here in the schematic and you just click on one of these terminals, you will see right here there is an object ID. And so if I just copy that, I can then go over to the code editor. And I already know that this one is for P0. So if I just click here and then paste, um, it's in read-only mode right now, but you'll see that it's actually this uh, particular node ID. So this is where you get those uh, node ID numbers. It's directly here in the schematic, and then you would just paste it into this line uh, in the simulator. So here, what I can do is I can just immediately copy all of this stuff into my custom component. And then here, of course, I would want to make sure that these node IDs match my particular IDs. So here I can define my drain node. My drain node has this object ID. And then I can do the same for the gate and the source. So we just literally just copy and paste them in there. Now, I think it's important here, um, as is the case with anything that you do for with writing code, is to comment this and make sure that each of these terminals is very clearly delineated in some way. So that way you don't mess up drain and source and uh, gate when you are uh, doing anything else inside of the code editor. But here all I have to do is just copy these in, and this sets up all of my terminals to match to the, uh, the node IDs that exist in my schematics. So for the next step, what we can do is we can follow along with this JFED example. And you can see here that we also need to then instantiate the model. So to do this, I need a block of code that essentially looks just like this. Now you can find that again here in the documentation. And if I just go over to MOSFET, you can see I have this right here. So flux.simulation model. So we're going to need this block of code. And then we are also going to need this whole placeholder right here. So what I'm going to do is just take this outer bit of code right here, and I'm going to use that and then replace everything here um, inside of flux.simulation model. So here, all I need to do is just go back, start a new line, and we'll create a new line here. You see it automatically tabs over. And then I need to just copy all of this into my part. Now, after I copy all of this into my part, I need to, of course, change a few things. So if you look in the documentation, you're going to see some definitions for what input 1 to terminal UID is and what input 2 to terminal UID is. So what this object is doing is it is mapping terminal 1 in the black box simulation model to one of these IDs that you defined for these pins in this schematic. So you'll notice here that for drain, it starts with 6501. If I go into my code, the drain is terminals 0. Now, if I go here into the documentation and I just look up the definition of each of these three things, you'll see here that input 2 to terminal UID is the terminal for the drain. So all I would do is just grab this, copy this to right here. So you can see here that this was actually put backwards just a little bit. And what I mean by that is here they say input 2 is the drain, but I made my terminal number 1 the drain. So keep that in mind. This is one of those reasons that it is very good to, of course, make sure that you properly name your terminals sometimes so that way you don't get mixed up with any of the naming uh, mismatches. Um, here we see that input 1 is the gate. And I defined terminals 1 as the gate. So I can just copy this, substitute in here for the element ID, and there we go. And then this one is just going to be terminals 2. So now I've mapped all of the ports to my terminals, and we can go on to the next step. Now, what we just did in the previous segment is we had to call the parameters needed to configure the simulation model. And that's basically what was happening in that flux.on setup function. So next, we need to create some objects that define the simulated values that we want to display 
in a schematic once the simulation is actually running. So this is done with the flux.on after step function. And what this will do is it will update the measured values being displayed in the schematic editor after each time step happens in the simulation. So now we'll finish the rest of the code and then once the component is placed into a new project we can toggle the simulator on inside the schematic editor for that project. So let's jump into the rest of the code now. So I cleaned up the tabbing on this code just a little bit. But the next thing that we need to do is we need to create some output measurements to display in the schematic once the simulation is running. So what do I mean by create some output measurements? Well, if I just open up this old project, you're going to notice here that when this simulation comes up, that it automatically starts running and starts displaying some data for these components. So if I just click here on R1 and I scroll down and open up the simulation area, you'll see here that there are multiple measurements going on at once. And I can show these or I can hide them as I see fit. So all of these different outputs are actually defined in the code editor for your model. So these outputs that you're seeing here, these are actually not defined in this project because if they were, you would see them inside of this section of the code editor. So what you're looking at right now is the project level code and that doesn't define any of these simulation quantities. Instead, all of these different uh, simulation quantities that you could display inside of the schematic are actually defined inside of this part. So this is defined inside of generic resistor. And in fact, if I go back to generic resistor, you can see right here that this is where we have defined all of those different properties. So we need to do the same thing for our transistor. So we're going to continue to follow the JFET over here, just as our example. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this block of code and then this line of code. So these lines are what I need to be able to create and define the output measurement values. So this just defines what gets displayed and what the units are, and it just defines the quantities. It doesn't actually display them yet. So first we need to define them, and then we'll display them. So let's define them first. So to do that, I just copy these things over, and then here, what we're going to do is we're going to have three different outputs corresponding to our terminals. So let's not forget, right, this is our drain, this is our gate, and then this is our source. Now that we've just copied this over, what we're going to do is then go back over here, and then I'm going to copy all of this, and then we're going to paste it in here. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that these terminals are assigned to these different current and voltage values. So let's look at current for example. Okay, Current in a MOSFET is normally specified as a drain current. So what I want to do is I want to assign this to the drain terminal. So if you remember my drain was terminal 0. And you can see that right here, right? This is my 65010 uh, beginning ID and that's assigned to terminal 0 here on line 10. So we have this set to terminal 0 to output the current and then display that under this current property here. So this is going to display a current value here under the measurements when we select this component after using it in a project. So let's just go back to here. Next thing we need to do is define all of our voltages. So here I don't think it makes sense to name this VP0 and VP1 and so on and so forth. I think it makes a lot more sense to name this something like V drain and then V gate and then V source since we're looking at the voltages uh, on all of the different pins in this MOSFET. So this one right here, terminal 0, is V drain and that's assigned to V0 right here. So we're going to make sure that the value displayed for V drain is equal to whatever the voltage is that is measured at terminal 0. So that's exactly what we want. So this is V drain and it's assigned to V0 and then the value for V0 is just going to be the number for whatever that voltage measurement is at that terminal. 
Same thing here for vGate. So the output displayed for vGate is just going to be the voltage at terminal 1, which remember we assigned terminal 1 as our gate terminal. And then same thing for the source. So we've done that here. Now this flux.on function here, this says after step, meaning after a time step. So if you go back into the simulation overview video or you just look at a project like this where I have the simulation running, you see here in the project level, you have the option to change the, the time step size and then the time step unit here. So after every five of this number of units of time steps, what this simulation model is going to do is it is going to update the voltage and current at these pins. And that's essentially what this simulation is doing. So just to review, first thing we did was we defined a bunch of terminals and we linked these terminal objects in our code to the actual object ID that was in our schematics. Then we set up a simulation model and we linked the terminals in the simulation model, which is just a spice model that exists in the back end, to the terminals that we define in this list. And so we did that for all three terminals. The next thing that we did is define a set of measurements that we want to display. And these measurements would appear uh, here when we select a component. So they would appear under the simulation area when we select a component after the component is used in a project. So once we do that, we then have the simulation engine update the values for each of these measurements after each time step. And we're going to update those with a voltage and then a current. And that's everything that you need to do to set up a simulation model in Flux. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Just to summarize, what we looked at is how to attach models to custom components that you create in Flux, and then where to leverage existing bits of code, as well as the essential pieces of code that you need to configure a component, specifically its simulation model for that particular type of component, and then, of course, queue up and run the simulation engine. Thanks again, everybody. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and of course, we'll see you next time. Thank you.